योग कर्मसु कौशलम a very good afternoon to all on behalf of hrdc gujarat i'm very happy to welcome dr mamta pillai our resource person for the day dr mamta pillai phd in english language teaching is an assistant professor at institute of law nirma university with a teaching experience spanning 11 years at ug and pg levels in private universities of ahmedabad dr pillai trains aspiring teachers by using her extensive knowledge in the domain of elt she has also been the resource person for various faculty development programs for english language teachers organized by ugc hrdc gujarat university and for e content development in form of moocs she was selected for tkt training and certification by aicte in delhi and cambridge english assessment in addition to 20 other workshops and seminars she was awarded for outstanding contribution towards university development and advancement of soft skills development program she has been an active member at various university level committees such as women's development cell students affairs and convocation while also serving as a key member in the board of studies for english and communication dr mamta has also served as ic dean of extension education where she had been responsible for setting up intensive training and community outreach programs for the university it is my privilege to welcome you madam welcome madam i hand over the floor to you uh, thank you dr minakshi kulkarni ma'am for uh, giving me such an elaborate introduction and i also thank uh, dr jagdish joshi uh, director ugc hrdc gujarat university for giving me this opportunity and the entire team over there for giving me this opportunity to uh, talk to our own fraternity of english language teachers or english teachers for that matter on this topic of uh, teaching language through literature uh, so i'll just share the powerpoint presentation and uh, you may let me know if it is visible to everybody uh uh in the course of my uh talk maybe towards the end we will have a an interactive round of some activities that i have uh that i have planned uh so maybe towards the end we will have an interaction with all the participants just give me a moment uh thank you again thank you once again because i'll be only able to see the screen and my powerpoint slide and not uh the participants uh, so let's begin uh good afternoon everyone and uh, today we will discuss the topic called teaching language through literature right uh with a special focus on what kind of materials and what kind of activities as an english language teacher you know we can devise using literature for the language classroom when we say the word literature or when we hear the term literature or when our students hear the term literature what are we talking about so first on uh, we all know because we are all language teachers we have studied literature also though we have been teaching language in our uh, you know universities uh, and only handful of us would have got an opportunity to actually teach literature students uh, all our lives though we have studied literature we have always been given the opportunity to teach language so there is this dichotomy that that we all you know cope with or we we try to cope with right so when we say the word literature what are we talking about you know we are talking about culture right a particular culture uh, from where the literature has come or, or the book or the text or the play or the poem has been written yeah that particular era the culture uh, th that it comes from correct so we have to understand the word culture here so for example if i am uh, i am uh, you know dealing with american literature so maybe you know all my sons by arthur miller if i am teaching that particular play it gives a window i mean all my sons as a three, uh, three as a short play gives us a window into you know gives our students a window into a, the great american dream for that matter right how the protagonist uh, resorts to you know something called war profiteering so if some of us are aware about american literature and this was a common novel so that's why i'm giving you this example that we would have all you know read this particular uh, play 
but how does it intrigue our students right so it gives our students a peekaboo into the great american dream or the character uh, you know resorting to war profiteering which was a very in thing back then during the 1940s uh, right and how the great depression kind of affected the lives of americans uh, during the second world war so all of this is culture that we are talking about pertaining to that particular period during second world war right so that is first thing that is culture the second is individual now the same way literature would also mean uh, individually what the author is trying to convey or individual standpoint of what the characters are talking to us about right so recently i was uh, you know taking i mean because i teach uh, law students and uh, we have to kind of uh, you know experiment with a lot of books related to uh, legal uh, you know background or legal themes so i had taken up uh, this um, collection uh, uh, it was kind of an autobiography uh, biographical book this is the laws and lawyers by mk gandhi right so in that particular book what is happening is Gandhi gives us his own individual standpoint about what he thinks about the profession of being a lawyer right so contrary to the life of uh, what lawyers are all about yeah the lies the life of lies and deceit maybe probably but mk gandhi provides his own particular viewpoint saying that uh, i i would only stick to the truth and nothing else so how literature so we as readers when we read or when our students are reading that particular book they get to know the individual standpoint about uh, about the the author right so the lit, so the when we take literature into the classroom it not only gives us an insight into the larger level culture but it also gives us you know a viewpoint about the individual thought process that is going on right of the author or his or her insights at the micro level also correct then the third word or the third thing that we have to keep in mind or is called authentic material now authentic material is a term is a concept is a phenomena when you if if some of us are from elt background that is english language teaching you would know that what authentic materials are right so literature can also be viewed as an authentic material because in elt what is authentic material anything that reflects uh, the real world right is authentic material in elt right so in this way uh, students when they are producing language when they are at the production side of the language what we are talking about is they should be able to talk about the culture that they come from and they should be able to talk about uh, talk about the deep thoughts and the insights that they have about the culture that they they come from or or they are surrounded with correct so that is what we are talking about when we are talking about the production of language or communication for that matter so when we say these three things you know all these three things coming together like culture individual and authentic material then what are we saying that why can't literature be used for communicative language teaching right why can't literature be used for communicative language teaching because as a concept in elt itself right the, as a concept of elt itself as a core approach is one of the approaches of elt itself it says what does the cl what does clt talk about clt says that uh, students must uh, clt gives students a real time experience to produce language right we are not abiding by the rote learning methodology like gram uh, away from it is a departure from grammar translation method right not abiding by the rote learning pattern or the grammar translation method but here the students in are involved with the people around them so here when we are carrying literature in the classroom they are involved with the characters that are in the book right or so they are, they are conversing with the people around them whether it is the characters in the book or whether they are talking to their own peers about the book right so in a way what we are seeing is real time language is produced and that is how we are catering to the concept of clt also right so why can't we use literature to teach language right and that is a the theme uh, for today's discussion that i have chosen i mean can i use literature that is the pertinent question that we have to ask uh, as teachers of english that can i use literature to design tasks 
right so that my students are able to talk about their own feelings or the things around them or the environment that they come from right so this is how we'll go ahead right so this understanding is very important here for us teachers so to give you i mean just a quick history i mean i know history is boring but still to have you give you a brief background uh, so certain definitions i'll just go over very quickly but before i go on to the definitions i would want to uh, say that uh, we all know that the issue of teaching english literature you know we have all struggled with it the issue i mean as students also as students of uh, i mean somebody who would have taken up english literature just so that they can improve their language right i will talk about my own case so the issue of teaching english literature to a non native speaker yes. you know it goes it dates back uh, in centuries you know early years of centuries so literature when we say literature or when we study literature it's considered as a high prestige in a language study right uh, when the access to literary works is just assumed as a part of you know the purpose of language learning maybe so what do what did we uh, kind of did when we were st uh, studying literature as students of ma or ba so the approach that we saw there was very much you know concentration of classics you are dumped with a lot of classics to read assuming that you know, students when we when when they are continuously exposed with this classics uh, some of it would rub off uh, eventually and they would uh, have an impact on their performance of the language that is what uh, that is what we have all uh, gone through right so the basic problem with the high prestige you know literature associated with high prestige or literature literary concentration of classics uh, that are just given to the students especially when i'm talking about the non native speakers of english so the problems are uh, you know plenty now what are these problems we all know the difficulty level of the text right nobody would want to read the original shakespeare's play right we uh, i mean we would have made it made an attempt uh, or made uh, you know given it a try but today's ch children i mean we teach these students of first year students or second year students they do not they are not interested in uh, reading the original text right so the difficulty level is one thing then there is the problem of you know accessibility also i mean back then when we were students there was a problem of accessibility also inaccessibility of literary text to the non native speakers of english right lack of consistent and and the main problem was the lack of consistent and suitable methodology that was employed by the teachers you know to teach literature so these are the problems that we have uh, we have seen as students correct and the literature class was mostly you know a teacher at a pedestal uh, an enthusiastic orator or an enthusiastic teacher uh, was just uh, very passionate about shakespeare talking to us right from ac quoting from ac bradley and uh, you know critics like that and uh, students are too busy like us students are too busy translating the unfamiliar words that come our way and respond to the you know respond to the try to respond to the teacher or maybe you know jot down certain things so that we will be able to respond to the exam that is coming up correct so all of these problems what it has led to you know it has kind of led to the disappearance of literature uh, teaching from the language classroom okay so the place of literature in the language classroom was also questioned by the elt linguist and uh, you know uh, practitioners so the elt approaches in the 1980s and the 1990s did not allow students to develop a feeling for the text you understand so obviously elt professionals or elt practitioners are at always at the logger heads with and we would have seen that always at the logger head with somebody who is a core literature person right or a teacher so clt in the 1970s when the concept came about in elt uh, it was more more about study of language for practical purposes right and uh, literature kind of did not offer any practical objectives uh, of language teaching correct but in the 1980s what we see is there was a strong reawakening of you know interest uh, in literature correct and language teaching so linguist and elt uh, scholars would argue uh, the value of teaching literature 
and also the need you know uh, mainly the need of reinventing pedagogical tools now when we say pedagogical tools i mean is uh, what i mean is the essential methodology or the techniques that the teacher employs in the classroom when she is teaching language or he is teaching language to the non native speakers of english correct so linguists and elt professionals or elt scholars have argued about why not literature right value of teaching english literature and obviously there is a definite need to reinvent uh, different pedagogical tools that we employ right so obviously this led to a lot of publications of books uh, on improving and developing you know students understanding about language uh, through reading and you know lsrw and uh, and discussion through literary texts also so mainly when we see these books you always see the exercises at the at the towards the end you know so there is a piece of literature or an essay and then at the at the back you will see there is a sentence structure exercise or there is a substitution exercises there is a vocabulary exercises right so those kind of publications came into being in the 1980s and that is what uh, the researchers or uh, the research some of the research would talk about on the usage of literature in the language classroom so here's a, here are some definitions which i'll just quickly go through uh, so that um, it is kind of self explanatory uh, i think there is some disturbance uh, in the microphone of some student i mean some participant oh, hello can you please uh, switch off the microphone thank you yeah thank you so much ma'am so here's some uh, research like modi says in 1951 that literature is like an umbrella term giving information to every business so literature is not necessarily the concentration of the classics that we saw right you are talking about esp so when we say esp english for specific purposes as a concept you're talking about literature which is meant for medicine students literature which is meant for engineers right literature that is meant for you uh, know child raising so anything and everything can be considered as literature which can be used right? similarly literature is a use uh, this was given by bard in 69 right very quickly uh, just go th- go over it and if there is any issue with it we will take it up in the next i mean towards the end maybe so it's an authentic material right authentic material as i had already established at the start that it can be any material which is available in the vicinity in your vicinity that you may would want to exploit to teach language right as a, as an elt concept so literature can be considered as an authentic material also and um, uh, povey in 72 says literature familiarizes students with subtle vocabulary usage so this is what uh, the research talked about right so the important uh, aspect that we as teachers have to understand you know is that why literature should be used what are the suitability factors of using literature in the language classroom right and this is finally by lazar in 1993 that literature is a particularly good resource uh, for developing students abilities to infer meaning right and to make interpretations so you tease out you you prompt your learners to tease out meanings the connotative meanings out of the text correct so what so this was just some of the research uh, that i have just quoted uh, uh, for which i just gave you the background also about how elt initially kind of was at the locker head but then it, it itself started talking about the use of literature so why not literature right so we have to as teachers of language we have to think about the suitability aspect or the suitability factors of literature right so when we say suitability factor of literature the first thing that is there is why literature should be used uh the first point i would say is the universality that is the common emotions and the appeal that it has correct so i mean recently i had completed uh, uh, one i mean i i just complete finished reading a book i just took it up uh, uh, i i found the title very intriguing and very interesting uh the title was desperately seeking sharukh khan now i am a self uh, you know proclaimed sharukh fan so uh, the title was very catchy for me and i thought that maybe it is about sharukh khan yeah so it was by a economist called uh, shrayana bhattacharya I, i it's a very new book that has come out and when i com- when i started reading the book uh, you won't believe that uh, this book was not at all about sharukh khan right it was about you know how a certain section of women in india 
mm-hmm. and coming from different economic strata uh, of societies look at you know srk's icon or iconography you know how they look at srk in terms of as a masiha to assuage their you know the, the, the deficit that they feel in their love lives or in their marriages so basic so i was kind of taken aback when i started reading the book right uh, so but i really enjoyed thoroughly enjoyed reading the entire book so basically the book was about the mapping of the economic and personal trajectories of these women uh, who came from different uh, economic strata uh, in india right so personal trajectories such as you know jobs their desires or their prayers their love affairs their married lives so all these diverse groups of women that she met the author had met uh, and in her research that she has uh, extensively talked about in the book that they are these women from india are so some some is in a slum area in mumbai some some she is talking about a muslim women from ahmedabad you know from juhapura so the research that she has extensive research that she has carried out all these years and how these women are divided by class but united in their fandom so why i uh, uh, why i'm giving you this example is that because it's recent, it's it's just recent in my memory that's is why that they these women remain very steadfast in their search for intimacy and independence and you know fun that they would want so universality uh, is what i'm hinting at so that though women come from uh, different strata their universality in terms of connection to srk's uh, the the fandom of srk the, uh, the srk's uh, you know icon that they look at so universality is something that that is common emotion that is the first factor correct then you have you know non triviality now when you say non triviality obviously literature also um, gives that opportunity uh, Uh, to give you an example i mean there is an essay there is a very a very a very very popular essay by an american uh, law, law i mean i obviously go back to my uh, uh, examples that i take up in the classroom so i was teaching this uh, law students uh, first year law students and i taught them an essay called by arthur vanderbilt the five functions of lawyer right now he is an american author uh, called uh, arthur vanderbilt he is an american uh, lawyer for that matter and he is talking about uh, he is talking about how a young lawyer should be correct so obviously in the first part of the essay he is talking about how to improve american american judiciary system but in the second part of the essay he takes a grand stand and says about uh, you know it's not a it's not mainly a bottom up approach but a top down approach that he takes about how you know holistically a wow. young lawyer should uh, be right that a young lawyer should have a certain leadership skills uh, so that you know he is able to hold a public opinion and then he goes on to give uh, you know many historical examples of ferdinand de roosevelt and you know uh, charles kin lindberg uh, that if they had taken that leadership roles in in kind of uh, having that public opinion then then the history would have been different so very factual examples that he cites from history but at the same time he is taking a very uh, you know non trivial approach or non trivial message that it would have prevented wars if that would have happened by the uh, uh, you know if those steps would have been taken by lawyers back then so what i am trying to say here is that uh, literature allows you uh, to take holistic view of things as well so that is the non triviality aspect that we are talking about of literature similarly obviously literature has personal relevance you you are able to relate to it very uh, each individual will be able to or each student of yours will be able to relate to it at different levels right similarly the interest also uh, it has got an evocative and suggestive power i'm not i mean these are very self explanatory terms and then finally the ambiguity now i would want to dwell on ambiguity also like certain literature we see is uh, certain literature we see is very factual correct uh so if i am taking a movie uh, uh called uh, again uh, you know on it is on slavery i'm a start so if i'm taking a movie uh, and if i am asking the students to you know get interested in the concept of slavery it becomes very difficult for them correct so in in the movie i'm a start by steven spielberg which came out in 1987 you say that it's a very factually correct 
uh, because obviously it talks about a historical episode of how uh, the Spanish slave ship was captured by the US uh, British Navy of the US coast. So there are a lot of historical events and the factual details that are there in the movie, which will which might bore the students, correct. But the kind of viewpoint that the author is, or, the, or the filmmaker is taking in terms of the contemporary American domestic politics that he shows, uh, that overpowers the historical events. So when I'm taking that particular movie, uh, there are a lot of factual details that are coming their way. There are a lot of historical events that are coming uh, you know, their way to, to, to grapple with the students I'm talking about, right? But there is also an ambiguity factor that I'm dwelling more as a teacher uh, in the classroom when I'm discussing this particular movie. The ambiguity being that whether these African slaves be treated as goods or whether they should be treated as human beings. Correct. So then there is a lot of debate. So because of this ambiguity, what I'm allowing in my class is more student talk time, right, to debate upon uh, whether we should treat these Africans who are uh, who are found on the Amistar ship as goods or merchandise or they are human beings. So obviously then the law students who might teach because they have a law background because they're studying uh, different subjects of law in the first year, they come up with very, you know, very good um, uh, examples or, you know, concepts of warrants, right? The concept of warrant that they have, whether it is considered as a warrant of seizure or as because we have to consider African slaves as goods, then it's a warrant of seizure, right? Or if we consider, uh, you know, them as human beings who carried out a mutiny on ship, then you have to consider as a warrant of arrest. So again, a lot of discussion is happening because they are debating about this particular ambiguity, which I have decided to throw on them. Correct. So when you involve your students uh, in a discussion or a debate, again, you are catering to a language skill. They are speaking more, they are thinking more, and they are you know, thinking critically in order to participate in that discussion. Correct. So yes, these are some of the factors that we have to think and we have to consider in terms of why we should use the suitability factors of literature that is universality non-triviality personal relevance obviously interest evocative power suggestive power and ambiguity then comes uh, then we will uh, then we would say that okay what are certain considerations that we as teachers have to keep in mind right how do i we have established that why not literature yeah, and then why literature? Uh, uh, why literature should be used in the language classroom? And now, okay, we have decided to use literature in our classroom, but there are certain considerations that we have to ponder upon, and we have to think about these criteria before selecting a particular text or before selecting a particular movie that you would want to include in your curriculum, right? To be taken to your language classroom. The first one is. This, I mean, this would be basically the five selection criteria that the teachers have to keep in mind, right? The first one is appropriacy, right? Now, when we say appropriate material uh, in ELT also, materials development is a big area in ELT, uh, which in which obviously teachers of literature are not trained enough. Uh, and that is a sad part, but that is okay. Uh, appropriacy would mean that uh, that you you love Shakespeare, right? But you cannot take Shakespeare to an engineering class, right? Or can I take a, a Shakespeare in my engineering class? That is the question that you have to ask yourself first, correct? So an engineering class would, uh, would obviously demand more of science fiction author. So if you if you take uh, that particular book where the author talks about you know thirty thousand uh, leagues under the sea, then where the author is describing, where the, where the writer is describing a submarine which is there even 100 years before the submarine was actually de designed, students would be interested and would be engineering class would be able to connect with a submarine, right? Would be able to pay more, um, uh, uh, more attention to that particular uh, piece of literature if you are going to talk about science fiction, right? In, the, in, in an engineering class. Or maybe you can, you know, uh, contemplate to take Dan Brown. Okay, popular uh, literature if you are talking about. So you 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 decide to go ahead with a Dan Brown book, but the selection of the book also matters. So for example, if you are talking about a Deception Point as a book, then obviously 
you know, uh, which talked about how the US government was hiding the proof about the aliens and they were creating information. So again, aliens uh, and US government hiding that particular information. So that will get them interested, correct? So this may help an engineering class. A Shakespeare may not help an engineering class, right? So that is what we mean by appropriate material, appropriacy, right? So once we have done with, uh, once we are through with appropriateness of the material, then we might want to think about uh, overcoming the cultural barriers. Right now, every book or every movie that you carry uh, would have a cultural connotations to it, and a lot of poems, a lot of stories are rooted in the culture that they come from. So how do you overcome this? Uh, these kind of cultural barriers also. So maybe what you do as an ELT uh, pr uh, practitioner, you kind of give them a prior to, to, to tour or a peekaboo into, you know, as a pre-task activity. So there's something called a pre-task activity, in-class activity, and a post-task activity, correct? You don't straight away jump into the text or the novel that you have carried, but you, you devise a small little pre-task activity or a pre-class activity. So uh i mean we studied desire under the ants or the color purple right as a brilliant brilliant novels brilliant texts but the current crop of students are not interested i mean i have personally uh you know seen this i, I talk from my own experience when i'm talking to my students that they are not interested in reading that particular book i mean they might it it might be your favorite book the color purple but uh, uh, but you will not be able to uh get your students kicked about the concept of slavery right uh, and what it did it did to the afro-americans blacks you the students might not be able to uh, relate to it so what you may do uh, as a teacher would be at the start of the semester you might want to tell them to watch a movie like an amistad or you might want uh, you know a 12 years a slave for like that for that matter with subtitles so certain uh, excerpts you can show them in the class and then uh, you introduce that concept of slavery and then start slowly start talking about it. So this is how, uh, in a way, what you can do is, or maybe uh, if you talk about Indian uh, Indian authors, if you want to take Mulkra Janan's Untouchables, you know, it also talks about untouchability as a as a as a very important concept. But it is very heavy for your first year first year students. So as a book, as a piece of literature, you you love it, but you you cannot straight away jump into it. Do you understand? So you have to go with a maybe prior reading material in terms of a recent uh, newspaper article, uh, which which uh, kind of um, uh, where a low caste boy was riding a horse and he was beaten up uh, because he was riding a horse because as a low caste he was he was not allowed to ride that particular horse. If that was a newspaper article or a news recent news, maybe you go with that in the class, correct? And then start talking about it and that that kind of maybe can get them interested in the main text book, right? So these are some of the uh, some of the methods that you employ to overcome cultural barriers, correct? Then comes intrinsic motivation. Now, this is a very, very difficult uh, thing to gauge as a teacher. You, you never know because, again, we deal with heterogeneity in the classroom. So obviously, it is very difficult to gauge who are really intrinsically motivated uh, students, right? And it is very difficult. So how do we judge if the students are really interested in the literature? You know, because the moment we say literature, they shy away from reading it. And that is my own personal experience that I have, uh, you know, uh, I have seen, I mean, uh, in all these years. So we have to present it to them as a challenge. Uh, literature has to be presented to them as a challenge something that they have to unravel something you know they they, they would want to unearth they they would sh they should feel uh, kicked about they should feel intrigued about it that is the try or that is the attempt that we have to make uh, uh, right so maybe you take a poem with a layered meaning right uh, I, i'll also try and do one i mean i'll try to show one example and then we will discuss that uh, towards the end a short story with a twisted end uh, or something on those lines right so this will get them kind of worked up. And once that is achieved, once the intrinsic motivation is achieved, you know, I'm telling you, uh, it is directly linked with the extrinsic, uh, extrinsic motivation, right? And then finally, the last selection criteria is the genre. Now, what do I experiment with in my language classroom? Which genre do I take? 
do I want to experiment with poems? Do I want to experiment with plays, right? Or novels or essays, right? Which genre you want to take to the class is an important question that you as an ELT uh, practitioner would, uh, or as an English teacher uh, would ask yourself. Because we all know that a wrong genre in a wrong class will fall flat, right? And it will have a large level impact on your students because they will shy away from reading uh, anything further so the best thing to do is to take what you think that they like, right? So probably you start, probably a graphic novel, right? To get them interested in that. And then you may want to, so uh, so very recently I was, I, I had to take uh, a sensitization class, uh, gender sensitization or LGBTQ sensitization class with my students. Uh, what I did was I asked them to, you know, watch a very recent Netflix rate, uh, Netflix rate, a movie called uh, uh, Heartstopper, right? Uh, and they watched the movie on their own uh, on Netflix because it has become a, it has been trending a lot. So they were really kicked about, you know, ma'am asking us to watch a movie and come for the class. So Heartstopper was one movie that they came. I mean, they they watched on their own, and then they came for the discussion. Most of the most of them had already completed the graphic novel that was that it is based on. You understand? So uh, they had already completed reading the graphic novel also by the same title. Correct. So this is what you try and do, and then there's a lot of discussion that is happening. So probably uh, a graphic novel. Correct. But a graphic novel, so I asked them to watch a movie instead. So these are certain things that you would have to think on your feet, right? So we have to remember that when we are teaching language uh, through literature, you are using literature only as an authentic material. So, uh, so you as a uh, diehard literature fan or a diehard literature person, you may not be able to give them a full range of understanding. Please remember that. So do not have that undue expectations of yourself or of the students for that matter, for the appreciation of literature, right? So all you can do is, uh, you know, consider them as a on a literary boat and you're just nudging them a little forward. Uh, I mean, they will sail a little later on. Right. And uh, beyond the classroom, reading will happen. Uh, and so out of 100 students, even if five, uh, you know, like lit reading literature. So then uh, you have done your job. So that is what we feel. Right. So once you ha have these five criteria thought about, correct and addressed, you can effectively, as a teacher of English, use literature in the language classroom, right? So again, going back uh, very, uh, and then very quickly, we have to uh, cover the three models also that, uh, three models that talk about, uh, you know, in, in language teaching, there are three models that Carter and Long has given, that is cultural model, language model, and personal model. So we have to spend some time on personal model. Because cultural model we've already spoken about, language also we have seen. So uh, what cultural model talks about uh, very quickly, you know, uh, that students understand the culture and they appreciate uh, it. So the study as uh, the study of cultural model talks about how student have uh, has to appreciate the ideologies uh, uh, of the book that it has come from, right? It is the preservation of that artistic heritage or the cultural heritage. So it is more teacher-centric, right? More teacher-centered uh, in, in terms of a pedagogical uh, mode, cultural model, right? Where the text is considered as a sacrosanct or a product from which the students have to accumulate descriptions and uh, critical schools and literary movements or the biographical facts about the author, correct? All of that, that, that I think, we went through as a student. Uh, that is a culture. Teacher centered, more transmissive pedagogic mode. Language model, uh, yeah, obviously, literary texts are exploited only for the language purpose. So it again gets very mechanical in, uh, in approach, right? The way the focus is only on the vocabulary, the focus is only on the structures of the language. Uh, so it's very mechanistic. So it kind of spoils the, uh, uh, spoils the pleasures of reading a good literature, right? So it, it kind of completely ignores the reader's response to a literary text, correct? So that is a language approach. So the personal growth model is something that is a that is that is devised in order to bridge the gap, uh, right? Bridging of the gap of these two previous models. So as far as a personal growth model is concerned, it means that literature you don't have to view literature as the end. 
but you have to view literature as a means to an end right literature is only a resource that will help us get to the language correct so what do we have to do with the language i mean they better obviously what do they do with the language they they learn to express themselves better right uh, and also have the pleasure of reading literature also so certain grammatical inputs you give subtle vocabulary usage you give certain uh, subtle use of idioms also you give through that correct and then the students are able to use those in their language that they produce right that is what the personal model focuses on and the most interesting the most interesting uh, 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 part is that you as a teacher are going to infuse a continuous love and appreciation for a literary text which may go beyond the classroom right and why do we call it a personal model because uh, why why do we call it because so for example in a semester we only get i mean the contact hours that we have with the students are limited right maybe if it's a 30 hour course we only get 60 hours with the students in a semester and to teach a, to and we every and we all know that to teach a language to teach any language for that matter 60 hours are not enough right so you are giving them techniques in order to master certain language skills which they may use it later on also right so as i said see out of 100 students also if five of them develop love for literature and with an interest for reading literature and then through that get to the language uh, it will lead to their extrinsic motivation right which is leading to their intrinsic motivation which will go beyond the classroom and that is what the personal model talks about right and one more thing is that when you talk about personal model it relates to it goes back to the core tenet of elt that we started off with the clt approach right the elt says that teacher is only a facilitator it's uh, the teacher is only an enabler is not a possessor of knowledge it's an enabler it's a facilitator of knowledge so you are in the periphery as a teacher student is there the authentic material or the literary text as authentic material is there and the purpose of language learning is clear uh, yeah that is very important yeah your clo and uh, clo has to be clear course learning uh, outcome or the objective so the language learning objective is clear and you have limited time obviously in a semester so you are getting them on the path and letting them tread on their own so that is what personal growth model talks about right so now i will just quickly uh, uh, go to the activities part so very quickly i'll just rush over the types of activities that we use in the classroom uh, when we are using literature to teach language so uh, these are so certain strong lines so this i'll do in the um, uh, towards the end with uh, all of you here but strong lines you know you make them read a short story in a class Uh, and they they identify certain so i do this um, most of the time that i ask them to identify certain strong words or the expressions that they like uh, from that particular story and then i divide them into the, the groups and then they share the strong lines with each other and then they substantiate that why do they consider the, like, the strong words or the strong lines correct so so the discussion happens about why they chose that particular line so they are producing language in the real time uh, with their peer group members similarly uh storytelling is something that uh, you end up doing as an activity uh they read a short story in a class they pick out certain 10 words out of it 10 or 20 and then you you list it out on the board and then you rub it out and then they you ask them to repeat the sequence the same sequence that um, they had so all of these small little activities uh get them uh, you know kicked about or interested when they are doing something in the classroom correct a uh, gap filling activity a very classic example of a class test where you erase certain words then you divide them into two groups and then you they fill in for each other uh, uh, the story uh, you know um, preferably with a detective story so it helps a lot of kinesthetic learner so as teachers we also have to uh, keep in mind the learning styles of the students so some students are very visual uh, in terms of learning uh, uh, style that they employ they they like when you show them something so movies or the clippings or the or the graphics and some students are really good at you know uh, moving around in the classroom and uh, kinesthetic learners physical activity so you make them you know run across the classroom in groups and then uh, fill in so all of those things you try and employ uh, as 
in your activities correct storylines you give them random uh, random facts and then fake names of the characters and the setting also and a uh, setting could be any uh, like a cafeteria or a movie hall or a museum and they end up, uh, they end up coming up and you give them keyword like murder and then you ask them to build a, sto a, a story just give me a second my uh, so then they develop a storyline in groups and then they discuss with each other so these are some of the activities that i, I myself employed uh, using literature that they like in the classroom and uh, some sometimes you also kind of uh, before you give them these activities sometimes such activity like guess the title the titles of the book can be really uh, you know intriguing for them so for example eat the frog by brain brian tracy is one title that i give them so you ask them to guess what could be the book about right uh, so what could be the book about you tell me the audience the participant right now guess the title i mean what would be the content of the book maybe knowing something unknown knowing something unknown all right okay anyone else taking a difficult task okay taking a difficult task so here we are all teachers right so we are uh, nearing the theme of the book but just imagine if you were, if you were to give these titles to your students maybe uh, if if i were a student of first year eat about the about procrastination I, yes ma'am about procrastination about the procrastination okay uh, so uh, obviously it generates a lot of discussion and interest in the students also if you were to imagine so this particular book is not uh, about ma'am uh, yeah uh, try to get something which is beyond capacity <laughs> okay very very uh, interesting uh, uh, responses coming in right so imagine when we use this with the students a lot more creative uh, responses come up right obviously we are here uh, teachers of english we know we can gauge uh, certain things and that's why we have this uh, uh, cultural understanding also this particular book is not a uh, it's a management book right so it is uh, you may you may want to start with it right uh, the book is all about how you would start with something that is the most unpleasant thing to do uh, uh, in management uh, as a management lesson you know so you start with the most unpleasant thing that you do first that is eating the frog is the most unpleasant thing that can get that can happen to anybody right so in management lesson they say that you start with the most unpleasant uh, task you finish it first and then you move on to the others but if you were to throw open this particular title with your students uh, maybe they would think about fantasy or they would talk about you know think about wizards and fairy uh, you know fairy tales uh, but the fact is it's a management literature right so this will kind of get them uh, you know started maybe generate interest in guessing the what about this curious case of a dog in the night time by mark hayden so these are sort of titles that you can start with uh, and now this particular title is about a boy uh, who who's who's life goes topsy turvy but there is a dog involved uh, who is which is a main character right not the main character but it, it is involved so then there is another title i found that is mustache by harish it's an indian uh, uh, translation translated book right so this is this book is more about the class divide uh, in kerala correct and it is about how a low caste person has retained his mustache and uh, it kind of kind of scares the villagers and the book essentially is about magic realism uh, and how he as a uh, uh, as a character came to be known as mustache and how stories in a typical village you know grows and how a class divide is prevalent in villages but just giving them a mere title and you know uh, can be a wonderful activity which can kick off a lot of imagination you know uh, and that would interest them further maybe in reading that particular book right then you may also employ certain visual prompts correct now visual prompts like for example uh, this particular it's a visual prompt so you are catering to different learning styles also uh, the independent woman extracts from the second sex now this particular visual prompt is uh, what would be the book about you may ask your students correct so here there is also the imagery of a woman that you see uh, extracts from the second the pink color uh, uh, is again associated with the second sex or the or the woman right so a lot of discussion can happen on that 
similarly, this particular second visual prompt, as you see, uh, what could be the book about? Obviously, the title says Delhi, but what more could, could it be about? Correct. So obviously, we would have read this book, so we would know. But students of first years, uh, you know, first year students would not know. So you would have a prior uh, pre-task activity of a, a discussion of sorts or introduction of the themes in the classroom. So you will see a Delhi, uh, a Delhi written, but a red Ford in the background. Uh, two child policy symbol that you can see here. You know, in 1997 or 75, the Delhi government, uh, how it forcefully neutered men and they raised down the buildings also during the emergency, right, Indira Gandhi. So the, maybe if you are dealing with a class of history, you start with this. So these are the examples of the visual prompts uh, that you uh, can give. Correct. Then you have uh, uh, this particular example. Now just take a look at this particular poem and a strong line so the activity that i mentioned the start the strong line i asked the students i use this with students like eight eight nine lines of uh, poem by Sil sylvia plath it's it's a it's an authentic material it's a it's a literary poem by sylvia plath can be used as an authentic material now the first activity that i talked about strong words or the strong line so i asked the students to identify what are the strong words for them correct first or the strong lines for them so I, I'm sure many of us would have read this here in this particular class, but I'm sure our students would not have read this or something on those lines. So what is a riddle here? Can somebody would want to guess the meaning? I mean, those who have already read this previously, please do not attempt. But those who have not read this previously and would want to attempt that, what are the strong lines that you find here? Which are the strong lines that you find here or the strong words? And why do you consider them as strong? So now does it make complete oh. sense? Yes, ma'am, it makes complete sense. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she says that she is a riddle because she does not know what will be the outcome of this pregnancy. She says it is the nine syllables uh, because it's obviously the nine months of pregnancy. Right. She calls herself an elephant because as a pregnant woman, she has grown in size. And she calls herself a ponderous house because uh, obviously the body houses a baby. Right. And she's ponderous because she's constantly thinking about the baby. A red fruit again the womb of the uh, womb of the mother and in the da, da vinci code also it, it has got a mention right fine timbers could be uh, compared with the child's legs the thin and white uh, wiry and the east rising that is obviously the tummy or the stomach is rising uh, the fat purse is the tummy and the mon money is the child right so i am the means a stage and so it's a stage that a very beautiful interpretation by one of the faculty members here. But again, here we would say that a stage is this is going to get over. This nine months are going to get over. Right. A cow in a calf, not a calf in a cow. Very interesting, uh, you know, reversing of the terms also. So her entire entity is consumed uh, because of this child. Right. So it's a cow in a calf uh, in, uh, uh, and the green apples, obviously, the concept of you know, sour things uh, appealing to pregnant women. So so what I'm trying to show you is that if I take this poem in the class, I can show that a poem can be challenging, you know, uh, through this kind of initial discussion about strong lines or strong words and the interpretations that you also came out with, right? So it has given them, uh, given, given, uh, giving a challenge to the students, right? Uh, mind intriguing enterprise uh, they should feel that a literature is not so not something that is scary or difficult to understand so this is how i tap into their intrinsic motivation you know and give them the extrinsic motivation so obviously when you make them read more of sylvia plath then then you may go ahead and uh, explore other genres as well correct so uh, here the mechanics if we were to concentrate on the mechanics of the poem so they ended up learning a lot of new vocabulary like strolling ponderous you know tendrils Eastly, easty rising, uh, new minted. So, so from seven, eight lines of one poem, uh, you are able to introduce language. Mm -hmm. This is how language to literature uh, can be done. You know, and the very last uh, example, a couple of examples, I will quickly take. Uh, this is one. Uh, there is this concept of micro tales that uh, that you introduce in the class, and that I, I personally uh, introduce in my class. Take a look. Just go through this. Uh, this concept of terribly tiny tales, very interesting concept. It is literature, right? 
what is what is happening here can somebody guess the meaning can somebody tell me what is happening here i mean okay. see it's a literature class so anything uh, any interpretation is a right interpretation okay maybe a scratchy cd or a record okay scratchy cd or a record okay maybe the ring ma'am maybe the ring okay ring ring, ring, uh, ring as ring, in the engagement ring in his hand 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 yes ma'am yes ma'am and engagement hand. ring ma'am ma'am some memories he had some memories yes hello ma'am yes uh, it can be like uh, um, a recording voice of uh, previously in love couple and uh, he yeah uh, he has recorded her voice and uh, it I may be possible that uh, they may not uh, get married uh, wow. so yeah. he is listening yeah. things uh, again uh, when can we get married and he is bored and uh, he has looped his hand and now uh, Uh, it's yeah. the 31st time that he has uh, broken yeah. the records absolutely yeah. wow yeah yeah <laughs> sir what Same. is your good name sir uh, parashar vyas parashar sir a, a big round of applause for paragas uh, parashar sir uh, you know bang on so here uh, when we talk of literature uh, obviously the students shy away from shakespeare or shalman rushdie for that matter yeah so it cannot be just that Uh, so here is the concept of micro tales. Very interesting. It can create a lot of discussion in the class, right? So the broken records, as Sir uh, uh, rightly mentioned. So if it's an adult learner, you who understands gramophone, correct? So how a gramophone functions? So Gisa Pita records are being played, right? So it's a broken because the the girl is dead, or uh, as he interpreted, maybe they are never going to get married, right? So he's pining for her. so the concept of pining uh, how he is pining for her or maybe she is dead or maybe they are not going to be ever together so this generates a lot of discussion in the class right prior discussion uh, okay take a look at this please don't think more i will not give you more time to think because you are teachers already so <laughs> it's about the change which has come with the time absolutely at 21 he says that he will uh, he will move mountains for her uh, and it's uh, uh, romanticism uh, versus reality changes the tv channel for her now your channel for her has two meanings one that she wants to uh, wants him to change a channel of television and so he changes it or he ignores her and put a television channel to her absolutely absolutely what's your name ma'am Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. Hello. It is said that uh, at the age of twenty-one, the boy was extremely in love, uh, love with that girl. So he was very submissive to sir. her. Uh, so While at the age of forty-one, means he became submissive. Oh. <laughs> he became <laughs> submissive, a uh, submissive. So whole change. Of uh, what I say, uh, being sub uh, means pehle uh, earlier, uh, girl was uh, at the center. Uh, while here, at the age of forty-one, um, the um, slavery is on the part of boy. Boy. Oh, so the very different way to look at it. Do you see? <laughs> not many. I mean, most of us would not agree with his interpretation. But yeah, it could be one of the interpretations. Very nice, sir. Uh, so, so do you see this? So, how the whole concept of marriage changes? You know, before twenty years, when you are dating at twenty-one, you are ready to move mountains, and then when at the age of thirty, post marriage, you are barely changing the channel, and that is what all you can do, uh, and that is what is expected of you. Not expected, maybe, but that is what uh, energy is left for. So, the whole idea of how marriage changes. Very good. Uh, sorry, I'll not be able to uh, uh, see what you have written in the chat box, but uh, very quickly, next. the lady thought it was a man who was doing it but actually it was the mosquito and the mosquito didn't want to disappoint her <laughs> okay right so again here uh, uh, again the same thing like if you do not read the last line forget if the last line did not exist so maybe you would not want to show uh, the last line to your students so if a last line is not written there then if there is a romantic angle that is there to it correct but if you read uh, with the last line then obviously the twist is shown so 
so in a way in short what i'm trying to show here to these example is that these are the concept of micro tales that are there which is again can be considered as you know uh, literature correct and this can generate a lot of discussion in the class and you can use this to teach mechanics you can ask your students to you know maybe probably write something of uh, something like this of their own by giving them a theme maybe so this is how this is what i mean i used to uh, kind of uh, involve my higher level students in writing skills so they uh, you give them a theme and uh, or just a characters two characters friends maybe and then they have to develop a micro tale correct so what i am trying to say is that this may not be the complete idea uh, so today what i gave you the examples was not a complete idea about uh, literature how to use literature but i just try to give you some excerpts right so you can definitely bring in some elements of these uh, into your classroom in your language classroom this will actually uh, you know give out uh, bring a lot of cheer in your own classroom and uh, while you are teaching language so uh, we have to respect literature and we do respect literature as elt professionals also just the difference is that uh, the difference of a good teacher of literature maybe a good teacher of literature may not be able to exploit literature for the language sake right but uh, as english language professionals or elt practitioners we will be able to you know use a good piece of literature and exploit it for our language classroom so i will just end with that and thank you all very much indeed for being very patient uh, uh, listeners all throughout and i hope uh, i made some sense uh, in this last one and a half uh, hour thank you very much indeed and this is my uh, email id if uh, you would want to get in touch and uh, thank you very much i'll just uh, stop my screen sharing and uh, the house is op open for questions if there are any or any uh, any view points that you have uh, on this particular uh, theme so that we can just discuss and learn from each other thank you <laughs>